this rocky plateau became the next obstacle. As spectacular as it looks, Leichhardt described the view as sickening, complaining of large loose boulders that caused the animals to slip. Nowadays it's called Kakadu, a national park on the World Heritage List, and it's more than likely that Leichhardt was probably the first European visitor. Today it's a breeding ground for something like one third of Australia's known species of bird life. Arnhem Land has been home to Aboriginal people for thousands of years and a record of that time can be found in the caves around here. These decorated hands may have originated from gloves worn by the British or even the Dutch visiting Australia's north. Is English or Macassan boat? Macassan. By the time Leichhardt got to this neck of the world, and it, it's a tremendous bit of country here, he started to encounter Aboriginal people who'd obviously met Europeans and Macassan traders and those sort of people around the coastline before. That became very obvious when one of them came up to him and called him Commandant. But also, you get rock art galleries like this that reflect that connection. Well, from here, Leichhardt had to find his way right up there to Port Essendon, weave his way through all these billabongs down here. I won't have the same trouble he did. I won't need the Aboriginal guides, but I better get going if I'm going to get there. They'd now been travelling for around 15 months, presumed to be lost. As they moved further north, Friendly Aboriginals guided the exhausted party towards the garrison and Victoria settlement. Today, the best way to get there is by boat, or one of these. I've been out here a few times, and it never ceases to amaze me. A more lonely place in Australia is hard to imagine, as the site for this settlement was on a strip of land thousands of kilometres away from the rest of the colony. Built in 1838, Victoria Settlement was established to be a support base for British ships travelling to and from New South Wales. However, after 11 years and enormous hardship, the British government decided to chuck it in. Disease and poor nutrition had claimed the lives of 60 people. Men, women and children. Mid-December 1845, Leichhardt and his men staggered into Victoria's settlement. The lost explorers were enthusiastically greeted and supplied with much needed provisions and clothing. This settlement here is only one of a number that the British tried up here in northern Australia. Had another go at one over there earlier on over there at uh, Fort Dundas and Melville Island and Raffles Bay over that way and then finally this one here. And one by one they all failed. I suspect that Charlie's monster originated from here. Because what happened was those three settlements stocked themselves with water buffalo. And as the settlements collapsed, the buffalo were let run loose and that sort of thing. And gradually, they spread all the way down through this top end country right down to the Gulf of Carpentaria. And that had been going on for something like 20 years before Leichhardt even came up here. So the spread was all over the place. And what Charlie saw down there in that lagoon down on the Roper River was in fact a water buffalo standing in the water up to here. Therefore he couldn't see any legs or anything. But he's got this great big head, his back out of the water, and like he said, two big horns. 
Well, that's my theory anyway. Leichhardt stayed here for a month before catching a ship back to Sydney. They'd covered an incredible 5,000 kilometres of unexplored country with the loss of only one life. However, two years later, he set off again to cross Australia and mysteriously disappeared. You know, you really have to be impressed by this whole Leichhardt expedition. They start way down there in the Darling Downs, and over a year later, literally stagger into Port Essendon here up in the top end country. Along the way, Leichhardt, of course, named rivers and streams and mountains and etc. after his patrons and those people that were on the expedition. Even Charlie and Brown get a mention. Brown's lagoon's down in southeast Queensland, and Charlie gets a creek named after him in central Queensland. But to my mind, Charlie's the real hero, the real character in this whole event. Because he's the one, along with Brown's help, who each day carts in all the food and the flying foxes and the ducks, etc. And I reckon without the input from those two, the expedition would not have succeeded. I somehow feel that Charlie's been shortchanged a bit over the years. Didn't quite get the recognition he deserves. Well, maybe there's something we can really do about that. <laughs>